Hey everybody, it's Chris and Gabby hanging out with TikTok the Ball Python for another 10 minutes with TikTok. And if you haven't seen this before, this is a little series that we do where we talk about a uh, viral video or some sort of topic and we do it while hanging out with TikTok the Ball Python who is uh, super famous. She's the one that had like 50 million views. So for today's 10 minutes with TikTok, we are gonna be talking about Poncho and Cheeto. We've had so many people request this, ask us, comment on every single one of our videos. Um, when Chris explains that crocodilians are never your friends, everyone's like, oh yeah, well, what about this internet documentary? And what about this d documentary, documentary? Sure. I say documentary, whatever. That's okay. The story goes that Poncho the crocodile was either dying or was shot in the head by somebody um, and Cheeto went and rescued him and kind of nursed him back to health and then Pancho fell in love with Cheeto and they had a 20 year old friend 20 year long friendship um, and he wouldn't leave his side so we are here today to crush everybody's hopes and dreams in the nicest way possible and explain to you why this is just not so well, this one uh, buckle up guys you're not gonna like where this one goes so we want to try to explain this in a way that is as calm and nice and respectful but also giving you guys the facts as we always do um, and this is something that we have a lot of people love and hate us for is the fact that we do not anthropomorphize the animals and we try to explain to you in a very uh, like very logical, scientific way, this is why this behavior happens. This is how this works and this is how that works and this is why it works that way. So like when Casper swims up on my shoulder and he puts his teeth literally against my face, everybody's like, oh my God, he loves you. And I'm like, no, he doesn't love me. I love him, he doesn't love me. And a lot of people are like, yeah, but, but Pancho and Cheeto. And that's what we hear all the time. And so we wanna to try to break down this behavior and explain to you that the crocodile doesn't love him just like Casper doesn't love me. And as much as we would love to think that they do, and everybody wants to think that, it's not reality. So an important term to understand is habituation, where we get the animal to basically condition to the point where we can interact with it without it trying to attack us, right? <laughs> She's coming up to say hi, huh? And so this happens when we get the animal to understand two very important points. Number one, that we're not gonna hurt it. It doesn't have to feel like it needs to defend itself. And then number two, we're not food. Okay, so that gets rid of its two primary motivators for trying to harm us, right? So once they are habituated, because again, these guys do come out of the wild. All the gators that you see us working with are ones that came out of the wild and we didn't raise them from babies. So when they first come in, it's very, very dangerous. And then we go through this habituation process and training process, and that's one, uh, where we get them to the point where we can interact with them in a somewhat safe way. An important thing to talk about also is everything that Cheeto did with Poncho, Chris basically does with Casper, except we're very realistic about it and we can easily make up a story about how Chris rescued Casper, which is true, all the gators we rescue are nuisance alligators that would have been killed. And because Casper was rescued by Chris, he loves him and that's why he kisses him and holds his hand and swims up to him, but that is just not the case. And that's not to say that, um, Cheeto is lying. I truly do think he believes that he has a connection with this animal, but I mean, crocodilians, they are not capable of loving, loving humans. That, that's not well, what Well, who is. are you to say what they can do? I know, we're gonna we're well, get a lot of that. I think I can say that because I have more experience in this specific realm than I think anyone on the planet. And I can say that with pretty good confidence. Um, the interactions that I do with Casper, I have never seen replicated. Now, when you see like the videos of Poncho and he's like rolling around on him and laying on top of him, all that kind of stuff, I can do all those things with Casper. I don't like the rolling around one though, because um, the animal's not having fun with that. The animal's definitely not playing with you. Um, I can do it, but you know, I don't like to do that where you like take him and like throw him around and stuff. Um, he's not hurting him. And it's it's not like it's a big deal, but personally, I don't like to do that just because the animal's not having fun with that. But what I can say that Casper does that I've never seen anyone else have any crocodilian do is where he does swim up to me and he will literally swim up. And if I put my hands out, he'll put his hands in my hands and he'll put his full weight and relax against me. And he'll put his head on my shoulder, his head on my chest and actually fully relax with his weight. And that is something I have never seen any other crocodilian do with anyone. Pancho didn't do that with Cheeto, okay? Now, that being said, I've never seen that happen before. I also know 
he doesn't necessarily love me the same that what people would think would happen, okay? And that's why I feel pretty confident in being able to say this because nobody's ever done this before, or at least I've never seen evidence of doing it throughout my entire 20 year career in this field. So that's why I feel pretty confident in this claim. Now, when I say like, Casper doesn't love me um, and that he would actually bite me if I were to do something foolish or scare him or give him a reason to think that like I am now suddenly threatening to him. Um, what I mean by this is like one time I was using a different camera than I usually use and I brought it in really close and it's in my hand and I'm holding it and like they can very clearly see that. And I brought it in real close and he swung so fast out and tried to bite the camera like a full real alligator swing. And it was like, whoa, you know, like very unexpected coming from Casper. So yeah, if he feels threatened or anything like that, like he doesn't, uh, he doesn't love me. Now we have a very good uh, working relationship is a good way to put it. You know, he would never attack me out of nowhere and I'm fully confident in that and the way that I interact with him. But if I were to like swing my hand out and hit him in the face, like yeah, he'd bite my hand, you know? Or if I were to lay in the pond and not move and not respond to anything for like probably 20 minutes, I'm sure he's gonna come over, he's gonna nudge me a couple times, not do anything. A couple times later, he's gonna, man, he's gonna try to bite me. And he's see if I react. If I don't, he would eat me. Chris and I were actually in Costa Rica last year and we got to see some of these really big American crocodiles. Like some of them were, what was it? Some of them Latin, like 16 feet, 17 Something like that. feet. And they're just super chill, habituated crocodiles. Not to say that they can't kill you because I think if you're swimming in the water with them. Oh, people some die of them, there. Yeah, definitely. But uh, lots of, um, really experienced handlers were in there scratching them, kissing them, laying on their back. Well, and I, I have a photo of me in the Tarcalis River in Costa Rica on the back of a wild like 14 foot crocodile, yeah. you know? And that was one I've never seen before that day and I was on his back and it's not like he's doing it because I have a magical connection with him. It's just an animal understanding the situation. Yeah, and for everybody that thinks, because we have one person uh, very aggressively say, oh, well, it's on the internet and it's a documentary, so it must be true. Not everything you see on TV or the internet is real. I know that's very hard to believe, but um, I actually had a TV produ a production from Germany come to the park and they wanted to film me with the alligators. And then when they got there, they wanted me to cuddle the alligators, which fine, I do it all the time. You know, I have pictures of me like in a pile of alligators. And they were, they wanted me to tell people that I had a special connection with them and that I was friends with them and that they loved me. And I was like, but, but that is not true. And he's like, okay, but that's what people want to hear. And I'm like, but I'm not doing that. And it was like this whole back and forth thing. And he was really pushing her that he wanted me to say that I have some kind of special bond. And um, again, we're pretty realistic about anybody that has crocodilian experience can probably figure out how to interact with alligators uh, similar to like what we do without getting bit. So I think a really good point to make here is that when you're doing something that most people can't do or don't understand, it's very easy to feed them whatever you want to tell them and they don't know any better to be able to say whether or not you're right or wrong. Okay. And that's like the primary concept to understand here is because most people don't understand these animals and they don't understand how to work with them, they can't say whether this is right or wrong or whatever. And so that's why we feel a responsibility to try to explain this in a more logical, rational way as to what is happening here. I've also heard uh, people say that because Pancho had a brain injury because he was shot in the head, that's why he's so chill. But we literally have crocodiles and alligators that do the same exact thing. Yeah, so a good one is Elliot the Crocodile I work with in Costa Rica. We just we did a really cool video uh, on our channel that took off pretty well where I didn't see him for two years. And then I went back in there with him. He hadn't been interacted with the way that I interact with him. I'm the only one that works with him that way. Two years later, I go back in there, comes right up to me. I have this like 13, 14 foot crocodile's head like in my lap, okay? And uh, it just shows their intelligence. It doesn't show like a Disney story though. Cause that's what people want to believe. You know, we want to hear like the Walt Disney story of like, oh my God, you saved him and he loves you now and you have a magical connection. And people want to hear that and believe it so badly that they will suspend their logical thought process to believe what they want to believe. We hear it all the time about TikTok too. And like, I love her so much. And of course I would love her to love me back, but She's just a really chill snake. We got really lucky with her. A lot of people were saying that as we were pulling off the ticks, she knew that we were helping her and that's why she didn't bite us. 
honestly, I'm shocked that she didn't try to bite us when we were pulling out the ticks. But again, just like a really, really sweet snake. They all have different personalities. Well, a good example here is Elmo. Yeah. So Elmo is our rec... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So Elmo is our rescue eclectus parrot, and uh, you can hear him in the background through this whole video. That's whoo! That's him back there. And so um, he has a severe plucking, mutilating problem because of past trauma. He was attacked by a hawk, actually. And uh, we've done videos on him in the past. And so we take amazing care of Elmo. We do everything we can for him. We cook him his food. <laughs> and yeah, we, we do a lot for him. And... He does not care. Okay? <laughs> there is not much, very much uh, recognition or appreciation going on there. He actually chases us and tries to attack us when we're cleaning his paper, giving him water, or trying to feed him. So we rescued him and he doesn't really care. So <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a lot about how you interact with that animal um, on a day-to-day -day basis, not so much like one moment of of rescue, right? Because that, that's, again, this is like kind of the Disney Hallmark card kind of thing. It's like, well, you rescued him and so now he loves you. It's like, we rescue many, many animals. And if you don't put the work into training them or, or you can't, like in Elmo's case, then they're never gonna love you. Like, they're not gonna remember that one moment and be like, for life, we're bros now. I mm -hmm. love you for life now. That's not how it works. It takes a lot of time and dedication, just like the whole poncho thing. Uh, he was with that crocodile all the time. This is a very, time sensitive and time heavy endeavor not just one day he rescued and he saved them and now for life they they love each other that's not the reality it's a lot of time put in so a lot of people were also saying and it stated in the articles that the crocodile chose not to leave um his side he didn't want to go be wild again that's what happens when you feed wild crocodilians this is why it's illegal in florida to feed wild alligators once you feed him they associate people with food, they're gonna be hanging around with people all the time, chasing people, walking up to them, that's why it gets really dangerous. Why would you want to catch your food when you can just get it for free? We actually rescued an alligator from a local park that uh, was called in as a nuisance, we named him Ajax. He was so skinny because people kept feeding him, he decided he didn't wanna hunt anymore. And we walked up to this alligator, we literally were petting him we put him in the car 10 minutes later chris was sitting on his back and i was feeding him chicken he was eating out of our hands that's just because it's so much easier to just get your food free i mean do you want to go if you're in a rush to mcdonald's and go through the drive-thru or do you want to have to track for a few hours a deer and then kill the deer and then skin the deer like it's just so much easier and more convenient to have it handed to you so that is why the crocodile chose not to leave well, you know, because you said that, you're going to get a ton of people. Well, I want to do that. <laughs> but we are. Yeah, more power to you. Yeah, but, um, not me. <laughs> but it is very important to point out that the crocodile not wanting to leave is not unique in any way whatsoever. And uh, we have the animals that we work with. You can leave the door wide open to the enclosure and the gators just look at it like, but the food's over that way and they won't leave. They don't want to leave, okay? Uh, so that is definitely very, very important to understand that once they're fed, they're gonna hang out. That, that's normal. This is not unique or unusual in any way. Now, I also really wanna point out too that with my videos of Casper swimming up onto my shoulder and stuff like that, it's so easy for me. I think about this all the time. If I was a horrible person and I wanted to be a charlatan, I could so tell people like, I have a mystical psychological connection with Casper. We have a deep rooted metaphysical bond where our chakras align and we hold crystals together. And because of this, that's why he doesn't attack me. And if I came out saying that from the start, people would eat it up. I'd be on Oprah. People would love this, okay? I'm telling you, people would. I would have a large amount of people who would 100% believe it because they want to believe it. They would totally think it's real. And if I was a horrible person, I would be so much more successful if I did this, okay? <laughs> That's not, not to say Cheeto is a horrible person. No, no, I'm not. He yeah. We're not saying that at all. We're not saying that, that Cheeto is this way. I think he genuinely believes this because he doesn't have a background of studying animal behavior for over a decade like I do, right? So he totally believes that he's not a bad guy. I'm not saying that whatsoever. I think he 100% believes that what he's saying is and real. And loves the animal. And loves him. And he thinks that the animal loved him back, you know? And I totally get that um, because he doesn't have the animal behavior background, right? But for me that does have that background and also a little bit of human psychology background, I'm like, dude, I know I'd be so successful if I just <laughs> lied to everyone and told them what they want to hear. But 
we're not gonna do that. We're not horrible people. We're not gonna do that, although we'd make a lot more money. I know. Okay. <laughs> we'd have our own animal sanctuary by now. <laughs> but it is just really important to understand what the real behavior is and the real explanation of it and to not just believe fairy tales because we like them. So another pertinent story to this topic is a situation at another park where I worked with these alligators and, and it was a male and a female and they'd been together forever, like probably like 20 years or something like that. Now the male is way bigger than the female and if he wanted to, he could easily kill her and eat her if he wanted to. Now he never did and they mated and they were together and they're in love and they're husband and wife and whatever you want to believe, right? Uh, whatever human connotations you want to put into this situation. Now one day though, that female had a seizure. Okay, and she had a seizure and she flipped over in the water and started, you know, like seizing up and immediately that male was eating her. And I don't mean like, oh, waited a couple minutes. I mean the moment she flipped over and started having a seizure, he was eating her. And I, I ran in there and like pushed him back and he was like, dude, why are you blocking my food? So this is like if, if we were walking hand in hand on the sidewalk and Gabby tripped and hit her head, my next step is to kneel down and start eating her arm, okay? Not to see if she's okay, not to help her whatsoever, but as soon as she goes down, I'm like, oh, free food, sweet, and going down and start eating her, okay? That's how these guys work. They don't love the way that we do. They don't think the way that we do, and it is so naive and childish to think that they would think the way that we do. You know, they have a completely different brain, and their brain works in a very different way. That's not to say that it's uh, any lesser of a way, but it is a very different thought process than what we have. Sorry, I'm, I'm reading the, the comments that we just got on YouTube. I agree with most of this video, but I don't believe that there is an intelligent animal on earth incapable of affection. And then it just goes on and on and on and on and on. Well, <laughs> so affection means different things. And with crocodilians, they do have some kinds of affection where you see where they're mating, they rub noses, they have some courtship and flirtation, but it's not like us. Again, this is why we are very specific in parsing the vocabulary that we use and getting our point across in a very exact way because it's so easy to be like, look how affectionate they are. And then, you know, the next minute it rips your arm off and you're like, but I thought they were affectionate. That's why we try to be very, very clear and specific in our verbiage and getting people to understand this. This is also how people get hurt. You know, you, you think the animal will never bite you, and that is how, how people get hurt. Chris is very aware that Casper will bite him. We all are, everyone that works with Casper, hands on, we know not to do anything to trigger a feeding response because it's it's still an alligator, you know? Yeah, it, that's why it's so important to make these points and why it's so important to not believe the fairy tale that he loves you and he'll never hurt you because that's how people get killed yeah. because their brain doesn't work like ours. They're not humans, they're not dogs, they're alligators or crocodiles or whatever we're talking about. You have to think of them as their own individual species and take into account that their brain has evolved differently from whatever animal you're trying to compare them to. And so in the sake of safety, that's why we want to understand and logically explain these kind of situations so people don't think well he loves me and he'll never hurt me that's not the case guys and that's why we have safety protocols and that's why we work the way that we work even though i know casper will never attack me he'll never turn on me because that's what everybody says the opposite side of the spectrum is people are like one day he's gonna turn on you it's like he won't because i understand his behavior he's never gonna like turn on me and just attack me out of nowhere but if I accidentally do something to trigger his feeding response, he'll bite me and he'd rip my hand off and he'd eat it in front of me without thinking twice, feeling bad about it because he's an alligator, okay? And so that's why we try to explain these things in a very specific way to understand attack and feeding response or territorial or fearful, just understanding that an animal bites for a specific motivation or doesn't bite for a specific motivation. And that motivation is never a Disney story. I hope we didn't crush anybody's hopes and dreams of having a alligator love story with this video. Uh, but we do want to give you the reality of the situation, explain it in as logical a way as possible. Now, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of comments. Let us know what you guys think, what your questions are, and I am pretty sure we're going to have a part two to this video and talk about it in more detail once we get more feedback from you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. We have a lot going on right now. I know we haven't posted in about uh, like 10 days. People were asking if we got eaten. Nope, still here. We just have a lot going on. We did announce it on Patreon. We're not announcing it on YouTube uh, quite yet because we're still in the process of figuring things out. But um, very soon we'll have uh, an announcement. But thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you guys probably next week.